Bitcoin, one Bitcoin is one Bitcoin. But we don't price Bitcoin in Bitcoin. We price Bitcoin in dollars, right? So the dollar has been getting less good. And so here's something that most people don't think about. Everybody's all, stocks are all-time highs, right? Mm, only if we price in dollars. Today, U.S. equities, the S&P 500, priced in gold is the same price as 1996. Because the money is getting less valuable and the things that store value, gold and now Bitcoin, are holding their value. As Bitcoin stands at approximately $1.63,584, Mark Yusko on the Jim Friends podcast discusses the importance of investing in blockchain technology now. The circulation of Bitcoin nearing its limit at about 19.69 million out of a total of 21 million, Yusko underscores its scarcity and value. He elaborates on how this scarcity and the conversion of energy into value are pivotal for understanding Bitcoin's long-term potential. Yusko emphasizes that the market's volatility is not merely a challenge, but a necessary focus for investors. He draws parallels between Bitcoin and Amazon, noting that while both are volatile in the short term, they are among the best long-term investments. According to Yusko, volatility is actually an attribute of the best investments, highlighting that it offers opportunities for significant gains over time. They didn't understand what I didn't understand at the time was it wasn't a search engine. It was an entirely new way of accessing information on this new thing called the internet. And so we put $500,000 into this little company called Google and we took out 200 million, right? Wow. Hmm. There should be a quad at Notre Dame called the Google quad. <laughs> and, and so I, I had this aha moment. I mean, literally the eureka moment that, wait, 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 wait. Investing in innovation, right? New ideas things that make you really uncomfortable. Like I, I say this all the time, if, if you make an investment and you feel good about it, you're probably gonna lose money. If you feel really good about it, like you are sure, you're probably gonna lose a lot of money. When you make an investment and you feel a little uncomfortable, you're probably gonna make money. If you feel really sick to your stomach, you're gonna make a lot of money. The banking industry has had a monopoly and they extract $7 trillion a year big number, hmm. 7 trillion in fees for having accounts and for transactions like today. If I want to send you money, right, across state lines, you'd have to have bank account, I'd have to have bank account and they'd charge me a wire fee. Well, with blockchain, I can punch a couple buttons on my keyboard and send you money. Whereas Bitcoin, it has the same scarcity as gold, meaning the amount of new Bitcoin each year that's created is roughly equal to the amount that's lost or stolen. Same with gold. So the scarcity is the same. And that's why scarce assets retain their value. But the divisibility and the portability are better. So I think for the next 5,000 years, Bitcoin becomes right. with Bitcoin. You have to do something called proof of work, right? You have to buy a machine and you have to tap into the algorithm and you have to pay for electricity and you have to produce effort. And this is one of the most genius things. If you think about all of life, big statement, right? All of life mm, right. is about converting energy to value. Mm -hmm. And everything in life is about that. And so things that go against that are antithetical to true value creation. So that idea of scarcity is, is really important. And particularly when we're talking about money and investing, and concentration of that conversion of energy into value, okay? Now, what does that mean? It means that zero allocation to Bitcoin and digital assets is the wrong number. And I've been saying for a while that, look, when I started down this path in 2013, 14, you know, I, I didn't really understand it. You know, I, <laughs> it's a true story. I got introduced to Bitcoin the same month as the Winklevoss twin, but they're multi-billionaires and I'm not. Why? Well, they got it. They were younger. They, they didn't have a business that they were tethered to. When I got introduced to it by this good friend of mine, I got the idea, but then when I started doing work and I started writing about it to my clients, my clients were like, no, you're an idiot. 
go back and do your job. We'll fire you if you talk about magic internet money. And the price went from $500 to $186. This was from March of 2014 to September. I'm like, oh, they were right. Eight weeks later, it was $1,000. I'm like, no, there, there's something here. What, what is it? Why does it keep being so resilient? It would go down, it would come back up, and then it would go down. And every time it was making higher highs and higher lows, and the value of the network was growing. But here's the thing. Bitcoin is not only the best performing asset over the last 15 years, it's also the lowest correlated asset. It has 0.0, .0 correlation to bonds. What does that mean? All that means is that what if bonds go up, you don't know what Bitcoin's going to do. If bonds go down, you don't know what Bitcoin's going to do. They're totally uncorrelated. It doesn't mean negatively correlated. It doesn't mean one zigs when the other zags. It just means there's no information content in what bonds are going to do and Bitcoin's going to do. And Bitcoin is 0.15 correlated to stocks. So when you add it to a portfolio, the return per unit of risk, the return per unit of volatility, the sharp ratio, goes up more than anything else. We have this asset. And the reason it's uncorrelated is because stocks, bonds, etc., all rely on the same thing. They rely on interest rates, GDP growth, demographics, inflation. Okay. Bitcoin doesn't rely on any of that. Bitcoin is all about the digital divide. I ask, I tell, I tell this time, ask anyone over 35, who's your broker? Oh, I don't know, UBS, Merrill, it's why. How much gold do you have? I don't know, three, four percent. How much Bitcoin do you have? Oh my gosh, zero. Are you kidding me? It's a Ponzi scheme. Haven't you heard that Peter Schiff guy? How often do you use DeFi? What the heck is DeFi? What are you talking about? Okay, ask anyone under 35, and DeFi stands for decentralized finance. Right. So ask anyone under 35, who's your broker? What's a broker? I mean, I have a Robinhood account. Okay. How much gold do you have? Whoa, are you kidding me? Boomer rocks? Zero. Haven't you heard that Peter Schiff guy? How much Bitcoin do you have? I don't want to talk about it. Why not? Because it's like a really big percentage of my net worth. I'm kind of embarrassed. How often do you use DeFi? Every day. So that digital divide is real. Easiest example is imagine in the future, and probably not that distant future, you're in the back of the car, and the car's driving you, and it pulls into the fast charging station. It won't take 45 minutes, it'll take four and a half minutes. You won't get out of the car and put a plastic card into some machine. The car will pay the machine. It'll pull away, you'll get on the freeway, you say, you know what, I wanna go in the fast lane. So you pull in the fast lane, it won't take a picture of your license plate and send you a bill for $4. The car will pay the machine. Okay. And so these microtransactions will happen in real time over blockchains and will have a digital currency, most likely Bitcoin, because ultimately all Bitcoin is, is a ledger, right? It's not little tokens. It's not little gold things. It's a ledger, right? And a ledger that is secured by the most powerful computing network that the world has ever seen, right? It's been up for 15 years. It's been down for 20 minutes in 15 years. It's never made a mistake. Here's a crazy thought. How many times people listening to this had to get a new visa number, MasterCard number? Plenty. Why? Well, I'll tell you why. Because Visa and MasterCard today run on a mainframe computer. They run on a mainframe computer coded in COBOL. Well, to change it would cost a lot of money. And they say it's actually kind of a moat because no one knows how to hack it. The problem is a few people still do. And so they do get hacked. And that's why you have to get a new number. He says, the only problem is when it breaks, we got to put a light on to Sunnyvale Retirement Home and some 80 year old has to come over and fix it because the only people in code COBOL are 80, which so ultimately, again, this is a long winded way of saying, Bitcoin is here to stay. Blockchains are here to stay. They're as inevitable as the internet. Volatility is your friend. I have a shirt and it says embrace volatility. What you want is a collection of the highest volatility assets that are uncorrelated. Like if you want to minimize your volatility, put it all in cash. 
which is the dumbest thing you could ever do because sure. you'll wake up with less wealth because inflation will steal it all away. So you can buy something that's a little more volatile bonds and maybe you can keep up with inflation. You can buy a little more volatile stocks. But here's the myth about volatility. Volatility is not risk. Volatility is simply disagreement about the future prospects of a business. So I'll give you an example. Amazon.com and Bitcoin have the exact same volatility, 8080. This is amazing. Wow. Amazon's been a public it's company for 27 years. In every single year of those 27 years, they've had a double digit drawdown, including this year. Okay. On average, 31%. Meaning, on average, you lose a third of your money every year, in theory. But when was the right time to sell? In fact, twice you lost more than 90%. But when was the right time to sell? Well, never. Well, who bought? Amazon.com on the IPO and held it to today. There's only five people. Jeff, mom, dad, ex-wife, Bill Miller. Bill Miller's cost is seven cents, right? <laughs> it's 100. Actually, no, it's, it's less than that. It's, it's, it's 0. 0.7 cents because you just did a 10 for one split. So 0. 0.7 cents and it's worth $177. So he was the only one that got that volatility didn't matter. What matters is the long-term accumulation of the network value. Same thing with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the best performing asset over one, two, three, not three, one, two, four, five, 10, 15 years. Three-year number is not very good because there's been volatility. But that volatility corrects itself over a long enough time horizon. There is no four-year period in which the return on Bitcoin is negative, none in 15 years. And that volatility is a feature, not a bug, because it's uncorrelated with the other things in your portfolio. Buy it today, buy it tomorrow, buy it next week, buy it next, don't buy it all at once. Buy some today. What Bitcoin is, it's the perfect savings technology. It's deflationary money instead of inflationary. So whereas every dollar I get paid for doing my job, converting energy to value, the government slowly steals it back from me. Over a 30 year period at 2%, they take half my purchasing power over a 30 year period. That's crazy. Okay. With Bitcoin, every dollar I save in Bitcoin over the 15 years has gone up in value, but it actually hasn't. This is the genius of it. 